Our next speaker is Katie Hind, Assistant Professor of Human Evolutionary Biology. Professor Hind teaches several classes in the HEB department, including HEB 1500, Building Babies. Her research investigates variation in the composition of mother's milk and how that variation plays a role in infant behavioral and physical development. Professor Hind also maintains a blog entitled Mammals Suck Milk. Please join us in welcoming Professor Hind. So thank you to the organizers for inviting me and thank you to the students who uh, submitted my name and recommended that I speak to you here tonight. I'm very excited for this opportunity. Now, you guys obviously already know the punchline of what I'm about to tell you. But imagine a magic potion. Okay? And this magic potion has all the energy and water you need to get through the day. It has all the fatty acids to build your brain, the sugars you need to fuel it, the proteins for your muscles, the minerals for your bones. It has immunofactors, hormones, vitamins, everything you need exactly when you need it. And it's made just for you specifically. This magic potion, obviously, is why mammals suck. Okay? It's mother's milk. Dobzhansky said that nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. And it's this evolutionary perspective that really tells us why milk is so incredibly awesome, right? I, I really like milk. <laughs> At some point, there was a random genetic mutation such that mothers started expressing a fluid for their young. And the mothers that expressed that fluid that most enabled their young to survive and thrive were favored by natural selection. And they passed those genes on to their daughters, and their daughters passed it on to their daughters, and so on and so on for generations, for 250 million years. And over those millions and millions of years, natural selection has been shaping a more and more perfect milk for young. And it has enabled mammals to have an incredible diversity all across the globe today. Okay. They can live on every continent, and they can rear their young in environments that those young could not possibly survive in if it weren't for mother's milk. You can look outside of mammals. Okay? Only mammals have mammary glands. It's where we get our name. But there are other species in fish, in birds, and in insects that produce similar nutritious fluids for their young. And their young need this in order to survive. However, these are very rare examples. The pigeon, the discus fish, the bat fly, which if you ever want to have fun, go and look up what bat flies are, because it's amazing. <laughs> also really creepy. And they, they actually give birth to their larva inside themselves and then express milk through their own uterus because they're permanently attached to bats and they can't lay their larva eggs anywhere else. Okay? So that's why they have milk, because they have to lay them and allow them to mature and they, they're born adult right? inside themselves. So, <laughs> However, these are very, very rare examples of other kinds of milks, right? It's only in mammals that this is a typical strategy, and this is why mammals suck way better. But this is a problem because milk is so ubiquitous in our environment that we take it for granted. I can go to the store, I can buy gallons of milk. Since the late 1800s, you've been able to go to the store and buy infant formula as a replacement for mother's milk. And all of those gallons of milk are going to give you the same kind of milk, and so are formulas. And because of that, we forget how long milk has been evolving, and we underestimate exactly what is in milk. And because we've taken milk for granted, 
we don't actually know everything that's in milk, how it gets there, and what it does for the infant. To prepare for this lecture, I entered keyword terms into the main database managed by the National Institutes of Health okay, to see how much intellectual research has been done on understanding milk. And the takeaway message is it's not much. <laughs> and this is really astonishing to me because the overwhelming message that we get from our parents, from our teachers, from our doctors, from the first lady, is to have a nutritious diet and eat healthy. And yet, that's how much we know about the first food that mammals have evolved to consume. And we need to know about milk, because what we know so far tells us unequivocally that it can help inform and improve the major health crises facing the globe today. 1.5 billion people on this planet are overweight, including 40 million children under the age of five. It's been shown with prospective randomized studies that breast milk can prevent the development of obesity. The number two cause of death under five years of age is diarrheal disease. Okay. 1.5 million deaths happen worldwide annually. And it's been shown that human breast milk includes specialized milk oligosaccharides that prevent the development of diarrheal disease by helping contribute to the uh, healthy gut microbiome. Okay. This can actually prevent kids from getting rotavirus and other diarrheas. Okay. And across the globe, the incidence of preterm birth is increasing. Okay. And many of those preemies will die in the hospital. And it's been shown that human breast milk is the most effective food to promote health in those premature infants. Most recently, two major discoveries have been made. One is that there are bioactive agents in human breast milk that kill the HIV virus. And most recently, a graduate student in Western Australia has shown that there are stem cells in breast milk that seemingly develop into all three of the germ lines. This is, before this, these were only found in embryonic stem cells, okay? But now we might have a way of getting stem cells from breast milk non-invasively, repeatedly, and safely for everyone. So this is where you come in. Right? Ooh, it's so meta, right? There, you're up there, and you're up there. <laughs> the only way that we can take the science and have it really truly matter is if we take the results from the lab and translate it into medical technology and governmental policy. And you, in this audience, you are going to be, many of you, likely to be parents. You're going to be taxpayers. You're going to be health consumers. And I trust all of you are already voters. Right? Yeah. And as you go forward in your lives, I want you to take with you the knowledge that we are failing mothers. Mothers have gotten the message about the importance of breast milk. And a majority of mothers initiate breastfeeding, but they fail to meet their breastfeeding goals. And there's a number of reasons for that, but they really boil down to the fact that we underestimate the challenges and difficulties with breastfeeding. We put it all on the mother. Mothers can have trouble with latch on, with milk let down, with pain, with perceived insufficient milk supply. And people around them are saying, well, you know, milk's not, you know, breastfeeding's natural. Breastfeeding's evolved, what's so hard? Well, just because something's natural, and evolve doesn't make it easy, right? So for example, there's another thing that's really ancient 
natural and evolved, right? It's sex, right? And we all, we all start be out being terrible at it, okay? I don't know what you think. It takes practice. So even though mothers have gotten the message, right, we need to translate that into ways to facilitate them being able to make the choices they need to make. Okay? Paid maternity leave. Opportunities for safe pumping stations at the workplace and break time in which to pump. Right, right now, many new mothers have to go immediately back to work, and the only place that they can pump is in the bathroom. I don't know about you, but I don't like to eat my lunch in the bathroom, right? And yet we're asking mothers to put their baby's lunches together in the bathroom, okay? And so we need to find a way to facilitate mothers to make the healthiest choices that they want to make. And right now, we do not have the societal infrastructure to do that. And secondly, we need to do a lot more milk research to find out what's in milk so that for the mothers who don't breastfeed because they don't have the ability, because they have financial constraints, because there's cultural perspectives that prevent them from doing so, so we can make sure that that formula that they're providing to their infant is as good as it gets okay, in a manufactured way. These are the real world reasons why I do the research I do, okay? because it has the potential to improve the lives of people. Okay? Because when we fail mothers, we're not just failing mothers, we're failing their infants and the people who love the mothers and the infants, the fathers, the partners, the family, the friends. Right? This isn't my big idea, this isn't even an idea. Milk synthesis was nature's wonderful accident that selection turned into a magnificent adaptation. Thank you. <laughs>